the playoff picture in the East, it's sort of solidified itself. But in the West, it is looking like a freaking Picasso painting. The West is looking <laughs> nothing like what anyone predicted it would be. Uh, right now, the way it currently sits is uh, the Avalanche, Blues, and Predators from the Central with the Wilds currently in a wild card spot. But in the Pacific, especially is where it gets weird with the Golden Knights, Kings, and Ducks currently at the top three in the Pacific with the Sharks as the wild card team. And yep, you heard that right. All three of the Jets, Oilers, and the Flames currently sit outside of a playoff spot. Uh, So with the West kind of being uh, so random, my question is, first of all, what makes it uh, that what makes it the reason that there's so much more parity and randomness in the West as opposed to the East? And as well, is it too early in the season to discuss which teams will not make the playoffs? Or do you still think there's a lot of change that's going to happen in the West? So again, I'm just going to highlight the most interesting notes out of the Western Conference. It's all three California teams currently sitting in a playoff spot. Nashville, which I personally all say wasn't expecting them to make the playoffs. They're currently sitting in a playoff spot. And all of those very good, especially the Canadian teams that currently sit on the outside, look again. So we're going to start with Mario. What are your thoughts on the West? And do you think things are going to change? Do you think it's still too early to make predictions? Or just what are your thoughts overall? I don't think it's too early to make predictions. I think it's, uh, I think things are going to change. Absolutely. There's so much hockey left to play. And if you're going to tell me that not only one Canadian team is going to make its way into the playoffs this year, I'm going to call you crazy because there's a lot of good Canadian teams still here. The Edmonton Oilers, they're really iffy and they're going to have to go on a run. And uh, I don't know. I don't see much happening from them. I can see them actually missing the playoffs to be quite frank. They don't have the pieces deadline will for sure change my thoughts if they make some noise there. But right now, and even if you throw that losing streak away, it's not looking pretty. That team is not complete to contend nor go into the playoffs. But uh, if there's one team that maybe could do it for the Canadian teams and join the Maple Leafs would have to be the Winnipeg Jets. I think they're uh I think I'm gonna uh, Ramoli's gonna like this answer because he was in his predictions uh, preseason. But uh, no, no, the Jets are complete. I think they're more complete than any other Canadian team we're gonna be talking about besides the Toronto Maple Leafs. Obviously, they're uh, they got a lot of pieces that can move. Hellebuck, I think, is yet to go on a hot run yet. So I think he's just gonna show what uh, he hasn't showed us his best hand. I think he's gonna do that down a big stretch, and I think they're gonna make a decent run for the playoffs. California teams are very interesting, and I don't think I think maybe one of them is going to stick in the playoffs. I don't know this. They're not all legit. I don't think one of them is absolutely legit. They're, they're all just mediocre. And this credits to why the Western Western conference is shaped so much as it is right now, the Eastern, you can name me five or six contenders off the, off the bat. Like there's so many teams that can go for the cup right now. And uh, you could just map out the entire situation. The, the uh, Western Conference, it's really tough. Like Colorado, I think, is the favorite to probably go to the – I think we can all agree is the favorite to go to the Cup and the Vegas Golden Knights. The Blues, they still got a lot of things to prove to me at least. And the, the Predators, they're a solid team. They're always going to make noise. They're always going to probably get to the playoffs. And they never give up. They're a tough team. They're well-rounded. So I got no question with them. But the reason why this Western Conference is so uh, – like a Picasso painting, as you put it, Jared, is just because the strength of the d- – thing. The strength of the divisions and the strength of the conference in general, there's a lot of teams that are in that rebuild sort of exiting stage, whereas the Eastern Conference, it's either you're a rebuilding team or you're a uh, a contending team. There's no in-between. The Western Conference has a lot of in-betweens. Let's see which lines they fill in. Uh, Yeah, I think you absolutely uh, nailed it there. I think I do agree with your point that probably I don't think all three California teams uh, will end up making it. However, with I'd say none of these teams going into the season I predicted to make it, but probably the way things are going, I'd be surprised if all three end up falling out. So I'd say probably one ends up making, and I'm going to ask you, because you brought up that point, which of the three do you think right now you'd put your money on to end up making the playoffs? It's uh, that's it's, it's a bit of a coin flip, really. They're all really in similar mm-hmm. situations. If I were to put one, I don't know, Evan, you know this team a lot more than I do. Are the LA Kings better than the Ooh. Ducks and the Sharks? Um, I don't follow him too closely. I'm looking at records and rosters right now. He's no, working with tough. I experience mean, like, and yeah. I think out of the three, I think it would be the Kings to make it just because uh, I'm curious to see what they do at the deadline uh, in terms of like acquiring a defenseman uh, or even getting just, I mean, they have the depth forwards for, and they also just are waiting on guys. Um, I don't think the Sharks are going to make it at all because if you want to talk about games in hand, the Sharks are currently second place in the wild card at 44 points in 40 games, but trailing them by four points is Calgary, who has six less games. Now, if you want to talk about like the games in hand, that's more logical for them to 
for Calgary to make it back in. Uh, Winnipeg's in the same boat. They're at 39 points. They still have six games in hand. Uh, and so is Edmonton with five games in hand and they're trailing behind maybe like a little less, but I believe it's like six points that they're also behind. So I don't see the Sharks staying there. I think that's just kind of like luck of the draw based on what's going on right now. Uh, I would say though, that I really like the way LA's played the last uh, four games on that home or the last three games on their home stand, they gave up three total goals. You know, they had a huge win against the Rangers. I mean, they absolutely pissed off the Penguins, which I could not believe. Like I was, I was there and I could not believe what I had just witnessed. And I just think they, I mean, they beat the Kraken as well. Not really great, but they're getting hot now. And uh, I think the only way that the Kings and Ducks, make it is if they're the third uh, team in the Pacific, because I see the two wildcard teams being from the central. Yeah. And I think that's a great point. And I'm going to ask you this because I, I think you pay a lot more attention to the, the Western conference and the California teams than us. Uh, so do you think that uh, this kind of surprising runs from all three California teams, do you think that's going to change any team's plans? Like, do you think they're going to become buyers at the deadline compared to maybe what they were expecting going into the season? Like, do you think any team's really going to, jump on their hot start and say, this is the year we're all in, we're going to make the playoffs and kind of buy a deadline. Like, do you, do you think it's going to change any of their plans? No, because I, if anything, I think the Kings should be sellers still. I really like, it, it pains me to say this. I think the Kings really need to trade Anze Kopitar or Drew Doughty, one of the two, just because they need, they need younger pieces. And the issue with keeping Kopitar and Doughty is that, by the time those guys get older, like by the time they retire, I mean, that's when Byfield and Turcotte and Kaliev are going to be in their, like in their prime years. So I think they're still going to be sellers because even if they do make the playoffs, it's not going to be a lot of noise. So I think they still got to think long-term. And I really think a Drew Doughty trade or an Anze Kopitar trade, maybe Doughty before Kopitar, but I mean, they could get a lot for Doughty that could really help them in the future. Yeah, and I do agree with that. I think it would be a foolish decision if any of these three teams that, like, they aren't secure in a playoff spot and they very easily could fall out. I think it would be a foolish decision to kind of, like, say this is the year and go all in. No, and yeah. Things. I, I, it would be a dumb decision. But I was just wondering, like, do you really think any of those teams would do that? So, like, you, you gave up no, they're, the they're going to continue like, to be sellers, but buyers in the aspect of future, not like grabbing. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah. Like not uh, like, so what like the Maple Leafs were doing, like with Nick Foligno and then like kind of as a rental. Like if if the Ducks are trading for someone, it's for someone that's a, that's buying a home in Anaheim. Like it's not going to be part of their core moving. Forward. Yeah. 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 I, I think that's a great point. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, so now I asked, we, we already asked you that question, but I'm just going to ask you the overall question of kind of what do you think the reason for the Western conference being uh, so weird right now is, and do you think it's too early to discuss like which teams will make the playoffs and kind of what's, what do you think by the end of the season, the Western conference will kind of shape up like? Well, I don't know. It's really weird. Cause I thought Calgary was really good and now they're, they're 500. Like I know there are, they're hockey 17, 11 and six, but 17 and seven is 500. So I just couldn't believe that. And given that Markstrom's still first in shutouts and is still so comfortable, save percentage wise, um, I think a lot of it just has to do uh, just giving teams a little bit more time. And um, I, I'm really high on Nashville. I really think UC Soros has the capability of stealing a series for you. And I think. I, I, I think the Nashville Predators can really go far. I think they could definitely beat uh, St. Louis in a playoff series, just given if you put these two teams matched up right now. And uh, I think in terms of the Pacific Division specifically, Vegas has just, they haven't been healthy. Uh, when guys come back, they're slowly leaving again. Patch Reddy was here for about 10 games, and then he slowly, now he has surgery. I mean, obviously, uh Eichel hasn't gotten there yet. Mark Stone has been in and out of the lineup. Shea Theodore Martinez has like, I think Vegas could easily be like 23, seven and five or whatever it is. Like, I just think they're that good. Um, but I don't know. The West is just weaker right now. And you'll have those years where the West is the weaker conference and the East is the stronger one, you know, back in the 2010s with all those cups that LA and Chicago were winning, you would say the West was stronger yeah. at that time. So I just think it's, now, though, now teams like LA and Chicago are rebuilding, and during that time, so were the Eastern Conference teams, and now they're, it's now it's their turn. So that's what I got to say. Yeah, yeah and, and those are all great points, and I completely agree. And just back to Vegas for a moment, where earlier we were talking about the fact that, I mean, 
They're currently on a little bit of a losing streak, but the reason I'm so high on the Golden Knights is the fact that uh, with all the injuries they had, they are still remaining at the top of the Pacific Division, and they're just a very good team. Like, yeah, I mean, they would be a, they would be in a wild card if they were in the Central. I think it's just the fact that the Pacific is so weak right now that they're able to and, stay. And, that's, and that is a fair point. I mean, it's not like they have the toughest competition, and that's why, I mean, going into the season, I thought Edmonton was going to be able to do well just because they. it's not a credit to Edmonton. I don't like their roster, but just they're in the Pacific. It's the weakest division. So I do think Vegas is a little bit eating alive on teams. But no, they're a good and they're a strong team. And you have to think that when they're completely healthy, that is going to be a scary team moving forward. Yeah. Uh, but now uh, we're going to finish off this question by asking Adamo. And just what are your thoughts on the Western Conference overall? And you know the question. I've repeated it a million yeah. times. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, as you guys were talking, I was looking at one team and I'm like, you know, I've backed this team before and I'm going to back them again, going back to the Canadian teams. I still think the Calgary Flames is one of the best teams in the league. And I think they've had a little rough run of form the last 10. They're two and seven, uh, two, seven and one, I should say. So two and eight. But this team is still a phenomenal defensive team. And I think Matthew Tuchuk is, I think he's having the most like underrated season out of everyone in the NHL. He, like at five on five, he's, I think his line has let up like less than 10 goals. It's been ridiculous. Um, I, I'll throw like some stats at you. Um, expected goals for percentage. They're second in the league at all situations. And in terms of actual goals for percentage, they're still in the top 10. Um, Markstrom is still unbelievable. Um, I still have good depth too. Andre Manjapani kind of, he chilled after shooting like 50% to start the season. Um, they still have Sean Monaghan. They still have Dylan Dubé. Um, their defensive core, I like it off the, like top to bottom. I think Anderson's really good. Oliver Shillington. Super underrated guy. I love the way he moves the puck. Um, so I I like I wouldn't be opposed to chucking some money on the Calgary Flames to win the division. Um, I know Vegas is fantastic and like hockey, but hockey's random. I think those are the yeah. two big dogs there, um, undeniably, because oof, that shit show just uh I think three hours north of them is um Oh, it's a tire fire there. I would not want to be in the Edmonton Oilers locker room. I don't know if we're going to touch on that, but... Brendan Perlini clearly likes to be in that locker room, but we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I didn't... I Dry saw the... I was comments. scrolling through it. I, McDavid's comments. Holy crap. That whole team is in shambles right now. Yeah. But uh, heading back to the Calgary Flames, I love the Flames roster. And maybe I was wrong about calling them the best team in Canada, but... I'm certainly not wrong that there is an argument to be made that they are the best team in Canada. And I know, I know we're on a playoff spot, but again, like the, or like the Islanders argument, um, they're six games behind everyone. So it could happen. It could, it could completely happen. Yeah. And I, I completely agree. I think they are a good team. I mean, of course, just looking simply at the fact that it, the Leafs are currently the only Canadian team in a playoff spot. And in general, just going into the year, like, in my opinion, obviously, there's the playoff reasons that people are going to doubt them. But I think roster-wise, I personally think the Leafs are the best team in Canada. However, the Flames are not far behind. I think you absolutely, like, you're not crazy for giving them the credit because I think they do deserve a lot of credit. They are a strong team, and I think they are built for the playoffs. I mean, of course, they haven't really had a recent playoff run. However, I do think they have the roster there that, depending on matchup, I could see this team ending up going on a playoff run. I think they are a strong team overall. Uh, and in a Pacific division, they're likely, if they end up cracking the top three, they're going to end up with a, probably a weird or random matchup that, depending on what it is, I could see the Flames ending up going on a run because they are a strong team. So I don't think you're crazy for giving them the credit they deserve at all. Uh, but in general, I mean, the West is just weird. And I think all three of you guys said it. The West is very weird right now. And like Evan was saying, I mean, the reason for that is it kind of flip-flops. There's years where the East is the weaker conference. There's weird uh, years where the West is. And of course, this year, it's pretty night and day that the East is very strong and starting to solidify itself. And the West is absolutely random. And it's very hard to predict what it's going to be like at the end of the year. But we're going to try to do that because with most teams currently reaching about the halfway point of the season. Jared, Jared, can I just say one thing? I'm sorry. I was listening to this. I, I can't say that the, the Flames are great defensively what? like there's wow. there's no way you can say that as of late that the flames are great defensively 
well, not as of late in the sense that they're currently on a losing streak. So, of course, you're going to poke holes in that. But all season long, I think they have been a good team. I'm going to give them a pretty good strong good too. Team. They're very good defensively. I think, yeah, I, I, think defense, they're, I think they're a good team. Like, I mean, they're tied for fifth in goals allowed. Ninth in shots on goal allowed. Like they, they're, they're, getting, they're getting it done. The basic stats. I'm sure Romoli could pull up some uh, absolute utter crazy stats that'll even show okay. you more. But um, I, I did even expect like the goals are lost. The roster, second. the roster on the back end. Yeah, is nice. that's what I was naming. I, 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 think the flame, I think the Flames are a good team. I think I'd give them their credit. They aren't currently. I don't think they would more. go on a huge run though, like because they, they, they're they, my pick to win the cup or anything. I mean, no, we're I know what you mean by that. I think they. They could win a depending on who they have to be matched up against. I think they are they're capable of it. I think they're a pretty deep. I'm not a fan of their I don't know, Adamo. I, I was gonna ask you this question, but like yeah, what's your thoughts on the depth? Because like uh they, they acquire Blake Coleman in the offseason, pay him a little bit more than maybe he should have went for. Uh they get uh, they don't get him. Well, Sean Monahan, he's been there forever. He hasn't uh, been producing yeah. at the likes at all. Like that's where I get a little bit concerning because there's no there's not a lot of weak spots to poke at the Calgary Flames. I know they're a hot and cold offense, hot and heavy, yeah. but like the goaltending's phenomenal of later, and Markstrom is one of the best tandems in the league. Their defensive, I think, is very good. That unit there, uh, their special teams are quite good as well. But like they, they're really top heavy. You mentioned Kachuk is a pretty. Uh, he's having a phenomenal year, underrated, underestimated uh, for sure. And I hate to say that because I hate the Kachuks, but uh, no, you got to give credit to him. <laughs> okay. I just, I don't see anything beside that two lines. I don't know. But did you, do you see anything better? Because no, like Monahan, I... I need to see him pick it up. And Coleman, he's been a little dry as well. No, you, you, you kind of have a point, but I'm actually like on the opposite. I kind of like their depth. Um, you forgot to mention they had the stuff of Majapani. Uh-huh. Backlund's Bolton their second line center. Yeah, Bolton guy. Um, Backlund's good def- two-way center. Um, Sean Wanahan's their third line center. So he, the offense isn't going to come for him because he's not getting those minutes, mm-hmm. but he's never been a huge point producer. I hated that it was Goudreau and Monahan when it was Goudreau and then Monahan. It's kind of like when Kessel and like Bozak played on the same yeah. line, you know? Um, and even on defense, Chris Tanev is one of the best defensive defensemen in the league. Um, Nikita Zadorov has kind of had a little resurgence season. He throws a shit ton of hits, he's a oh, yeah. big guy. Um, and I just I hate to say it. I think this team is built for the playoffs. Matthew so, Tuchuk, Matthew Tuchuk is a playoff player. Chris Tanev, playoff player. Um, Rasmus Anderson, good on the power play, solid, solid defensively, not afraid to throw the body. Um, two solid goalies. You know, Slater obviously isn't the starting goalie, but he's a very adequate he's pulled his way. one B backup. Yeah, he's been good for what he's needed to do. Obviously, Markstrom's Markstrom. Um, their first line. Like I said, unbelievable. I did pull up the stat among lines that have played over 250 minutes together, which is a lot. They are third in goals against with eight. Only let in eight goals on five on five, that three line. So that line is uh, Lindholm to Chuck and uh, Goudreau. Mm-hmm. So I think they've been fantastic together. And I just, I, I like, I like the team. They got like their fourth line is whatever. I'm looking at it right now. Trevor Lewis, Brandon Richard, Brad Richardson, who notoriously is a fantastic penalty killer. Um, and Brett Ritchie. It's kind of crazy. He's the Richie who has a spot in the lineup right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I seriously do like this team because I think they are built to go on a run. Evan, but what I, I just, I'm curious, what do you see? Like what, what holes need to be filled with this team? I just recently, they haven't played well oh, yeah. again. Like COVID I killed them. They're on a lose. They're the on COVID a COVID destructed them. Like yeah, they were, they they were the start of I the know. whole COVID. I shit. just, I was never. Well, yeah, but that was a little while back. I'm just saying, like right now, I would not put them as a team that's great defensively because they're just getting killed. It, okay. it look like I understand if you're like losing games or whatever. Like well, let's wrap this up. I'm just saying, like they're they're losing bad. Like they're, they're losing. Right. They're in a big rut right now. No, I, I'm just Every saying, team's going like, to But even when they were beating, like, they beat the crack and they allowed four goals against Seattle. Like, I just don't know how you even – It was bad. Do. Yeah. And, you know, just, goalies have bad games too. Yeah. Like, remember, a team that they – they definitely do rely on Markstrom a lot, but I think that's a thing with a lot of good goalies do that, except if you're the Tampa Bay Lightning. But um, Jack Campbell will bring up the Leafs. He gets relied on yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. And that I think that inflates the – Leafs actual defensive numbers because just watching them and looking at their decor, it's not fantastic. But then you look at, I don't have it in front of me, but they're probably top 10 in goals against, probably even top five, which looking at their decor, 
I'd say no way. So yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe right, yeah. just a rut. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. In my opinion, I think I would give Calgary credit for being a good team. And the reason, like, I just think they are good defensively. I think they are a good team. And I think it's a little bit of recency bias of, oh, they've lost four in a row, so then you're going to take away from them. But all season long, I mean, they have been one of the best teams in the league. So I don't think it's fair to entirely kind of flip that on their head after a few bad games. I think you kind of have to wait and see there. And maybe if they keep this up for another month or so, then you could start poking holes in their lineup. But Right now, I think they're still all season long. They've been one of the hottest teams, so I'd give them their credit. I think they are capable, depending on who they have to be matched up against. I think they could end up going on a run. Uh, but now, I guess we'll, we'll move on to the topic I was going to introduce before uh, with obviously closing out, talking about the Western Conference now uh, with teams around like their 40th game of the season. Like we're reaching the halfway point of the season. Uh, the Leafs, for reference, were at our 36th game in the season. Uh, we're slow, uh, slowly nearing the halfway point. 